How's it going, everyone? All right, we'll get started here in a second. Hope everyone's having a good day. Very, very warm out. Um, it's definitely, definitely summer is here and it's getting hot. Um, so I'm glad we're doing some VA tonight because I need a nice uh, refreshing white wine right now. All right, well, we'll get started. I've got a couple things to uh, um, talk about before we get started with the wine. A couple announcements, uh, good announcements. Uh, but first, uh, my name is Garrett. I am the brand ambassador, tasting room manager, and sommelier at Zaka Mesa Winery. And this is another edition of our Zaka Mesa at Home. Uh, tonight, we will be doing the 2017 Viognier. Uh, Viognier has been our main white Roan varietal at Zaka Mesa uh, since we originally planted it. So I'm um, real excited to, to talk about this wine. Um, like I just mentioned, it's also very hot out. So Viognier is a great, refreshing, bright uh, wine that is great for the hot weather. Um, if you have some Viognier at home, please open a bottle, pour a glass, give you some time to do that while I uh, go over some announcements. Um, if you don't have Viognier, uh, just you know, hope, hopefully you got something. You got some, some nice white wine, some rosé, even a beer, I'll take it. Just, uh, you know, crack open something so we can uh, enjoy this together. Um, oh, wow. So Mel over here, 105 in Vegas. So I don't feel too bad then. It was, I think it was just, it got over 90 something today. Um, I was in Los Alamos for a little bit too. And it was pretty, pretty hot and windy too. It's like this hot wind, which is not, not fun. Um, a couple announcements, if you notice on my little board here, something new, Saturdays were open by reservations. So right now, um, uh, if you want to make a reservation, you just need to call the winery. Um, that line is directed to me, so don't call right now, wait till the tasting's over. Uh, but you can call the winery at our phone number, uh, 805-688-9339, um, and my extension is 319, uh, to make a reservation. Uh, we're going to be opening on Saturdays. We've partnered up with uh, Bella Forno, which is a local uh, restaurant in the town of Orkut where I live. Um, they have a brick oven pizza they'll be bringing out um, to the property, doing some really nice uh, pizzas. Uh, the menu's on our website. Um, so just give us a call to make the reservation. We're, we're doing it in uh, blocks. So there's an 11 to 12.30 time, um, a 1 to 2.30 time, and a 3 to 4.30 time. So give us a call to make that reservation. Um, and it, you can make it out to another Saturday. We're just starting this Saturday um, for our first reopening. Um, unfortunately, we are not allowed to do tastings at this time, um, but we will be doing wine by the glass and bottles. So you can come out, sit at the picnic table out in the courtyard, um, get some good food, open a bottle of wine, and just be out in some nice fresh air. The weather's gonna be gorgeous. It's gonna be nice and warm. Uh, we have some umbrellas too to keep people shaded. So it's gonna be a nice day. Um, if you're local and you can make it out there, uh, just give us a call. Um, I'm gonna post the number actually on here right now. Um, so it is available. And this is uh, my Instagram that I'm posting it from, which is um, somdad30. Sorry, I forgot the extension. All right, so get um, give us a call uh, when we get off the tasting. If you want to make a reservation, come out to the winery. Well, let's get started. So we're going to be doing the uh, 2017 Viognier, uh, perfect warm weather wine. Um, this wine is very bright, very tropical, a lot of stone fruit, um, very aromatic. It just it's very lush aromatically. Um, and it's, it's, it's got a lot of structure for a white wine, very high in acid, so it really gets your, your salivation going. Um, so the way we do our Viognier, uh, we hand pick early, out, early in the morning, bring it into the property. Uh, we do about a two hour press on the skins. Um, once the juice is uh, gently extracted, we take that juice, we put it into um, a stainless steel tank, we cold settle it for about 24 hours. 
Um, and then we're gonna rack it, which gets uh, rid of uh, the hard sediment, so a lot of the lard sediment. Um, after that process, we begin fermentation. Um, about halfway through fermentation, we transfer that juice into neutral French oak, 100% neutral French oak, to finish fermentation and go through its aging. So the total aging time is seven months um, in 100% neutral French oak. And with the, the shorter amount of barrel aging, it keeps a lot of those really bright uh, tropical uh, fruit characteristics just really um, right up front and just really uh, lush and bright and refreshing. Uh, definitely, like I said, gets, gets the salivation going um, on the palate. Um, kind of a, a cool story about our Viognier. Um, so the, these original vines, uh, were planted back in 1992, um, which is you know these are these are these are original our original VNA vines are pretty old, um, you know, now going almost 30 years old uh, in a couple couple years, um, but we actually didn't originally intend to plant VNA. There was a, um, a a grower in California at that time that had accidentally sold some Rusan. Um, uh, clippings uh, to a, a couple different producers. We happen to be one of them. So our actual first vintage um, of Vigne was, uh, oh, I'm sorry, all the way around. We originally wanted to plant Rusan. The Rusan clippings were misidentified as Vigne. So our first Rusan was actually Vigne and we ended up keeping the, the Vigne block and continuing with that program. So uh, those original plantings were an accidental planting, our first block of Viognier. Uh, but it's kind of funny because Viognier has actually become, you know, our main white uh, Rome varietal over the years. Um, so starting in, you know, 92 with that first planting, um, first vintage again was actually, um, um, the Roussan was actually Viognier. So our first vintage of Roussan actually being Viognier. So kind of funny, kind of funny story how it made its way to our, to our vineyard. Um, and now, you know, some 30 years later has you know, been our main uh, white Rhone bride on the property. Uh, we also do a white blend with our Viognier that um, we use a small amount um, in this blend, which is called Cuvée Blanc, which is a Roussan Grenache Blanc Viognier blend. So kind of a more classic uh, white Rhone blend. Uh, Viognier is always typically a smaller percentage in that, in that blend. Um, but most of the grapes for this program go into the single varietal bottling. Uh, the Viognier is kind of the, the white wine that you'll probably most often see out in the market. Um, you know, you'll see it in retailers, uh, restaurants, you know, by the glass. You know, it's our, our main white that we distribute. Um, right now, too, um, even though we are reopening, we're still continuing our shipping deal. Um, so if you purchase uh, uh, six or more bottles, you'll get $5 shipping, um, as well as a complimentary cool pack. So with the hot weather going up, uh, there's a cool pack that goes into the shipping that keeps the wine cool so it doesn't um, get heat damage as it's shipping. Those are usually uh, $12 um, per six bottle order. Those are complimentary uh, with any six bottle order right now. So still just $5 shipping and you get that cool pack, which is really nice. Um, and we still got some nice uh, wine shipping deals going on even though we're reopening. Mm. So good right now. Does anybody have this Viognier right now at home, drinking a glass? How's it going, Jeff? Good to see you on here again. All right, California wine guys, great news. Can't wait to visit again. Yes, absolutely. Real excited to open. Uh, we'll, you know, again, we're opening on Saturday, reopening on Saturday um, for reservation. And it's gonna be real nice just to be back at the winery, even though we're not doing tastings. Um, you know, we can still have people, you know, enjoying some wine on our property, which hasn't happened for almost a few months now. Um, hey, Ray, open the bottle, fantastic. Now, for those in the warmer weather, you know, if you have Viognier, this is one of the main, you know, white wines you're gonna want with all the tropical characteristics. Um, it's high acid. It's just really refreshing um, and really just kind of helps uh, helps cool you down. Uh, 
Uh, I've got a question from Mel. Do you blend a little Viognier into any of your reds? Yeah, good question. We actually have a, a Syrah program called Chapel G, um, which is uh, kind of that coat roti, so Northern Rhone coat roti style, where we uh, co-ferment a small percentage of Viognier uh, into our Syrah. And the Viognier is actually interplanted on that block of uh, Syrah grapes, so it grows together. Um, it's there on the same par part of the vineyard. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's a little co ferment, oh, only about 3%, uh, just a small amount. Um, there, we, in our history, we have had some vintages of Syrah that had up to 10% Vignet, um, but more, more recently, the Chapel G is that program, and again, you know, about three, 2 to 3% Vignet that's co fermented with that program. Only 85 degrees in Denver, all right. Still, that's, hey, that's, that's pretty warm, that's pretty warm. Jeff says, we have some, it's Pat's favorite, perfect. Got some of that Vignet. So again, this, this first block of uh, Vignet is planted in 1992. We planted, uh, which, is, which is called Cushman E. Uh, the other two blocks are called uh, Fox, Fox and A and Fox and B, and those were planted um, in the 2000s. So the uh, original block we still have planted, uh, you know, under original rootstock, um, and that is the Cushman E block, which is actually at a different section of vineyard um, than Fox and A and Fox and B. Fox and A and Fox and B actually run across um, parallel to the Fox and Canyon Road, whereas Cushman E is actually up on the hillside, um, where they are the that's the only patch of white varietals that we have planted, um, where most of the the whites are all planted on that lower slope. Um, definitely, uh, Kushmi, you know, is very different from Fox and A and Fox and B, um, character wise. Um, we actually, uh, are taking Kushman E and I think it's the 2019 vintage, which will be isolated uh, as a separate bottling, which will be the Kushman, um, block Viognier. So old vine Viognier, um, which will be going into a whole separate bottling, um, from our normal Viognier program. So that's going to be really cool. It's the first time we've ever done that. Um, and I believe that's the, the 2019 vintage. So that block will be isolated in a bottling. So you can really see the difference of that block. Um, it's, and it's kind of cool, you know, uh, Kristen, our winemaker, uh, really great at sharing, you know, her practices and, you know, the, you know, when the wine is aging in barrel, you know, letting us taste and sample. So we can really see, you know, the difference um, of the different, you know, sections on our vineyard. Um, I've had the privilege of, you know, when she's done the Viognier, uh, tasted you know the barrels from those different blocks because they're the blocks are picked separately so they're not together and they age separately too so they can be isolated and the f flavor profiles can be picked out so uh, whereas uh, Cushman E is definitely uh, way more mineral driven it's it's crazy the uniqueness of that block comparatively to Fox and A and Fox and B uh, which a lot of the um, tropical um, and stone fruit characteristics come from, whereas Kushmini is more mineral driven, more floral, a little bit more of that kind of uh, tart, like blood orange and nectarine kind of flavors. And, uh, you know, Fox and A and Fox and B bring in that really bright tropical uh, nuance and characteristic. Uh, so those two blocks together, you know, you get this complete um, Viognier with all those different flavor profiles, uh, but separately they have their own distinct characteristics. Uh, it's tasting great. And the uh, one thing I really like about our Viognier too, it's not as uh, viscous or um, over the top floral um, that Viognier can be. You know, uh, Viognier originating from Condru, excuse me, in Northern Rhone, which produce, produces nothing but Viognier. Um, if you've ever had a Viognier from Condru, they are whew, just really viscous, very floral. It's like drinking, it can be like drinking perfume. Um, and not necessarily in a bad way, just it's very different. Um, but um, big difference with our, our Viognier is definitely it's you know more tropical, um, you know more citric, and doesn't it? Viognier has that classic floral characteristic, but it's not as you know over the top as some Viognier's can get.
And it's a nice little blending component in the Cuvée Blanc, you know, adds that little, um, that little tropical and kind of uplifts the aromatics in the Cuvée Blanc. If you, if you guys have ever had the Cuvée Blanc, which is my favorite white, um, a state white that we do at Zach and Mesa, um, you know, you can kind of get that little, the, the little tropical nuance that, and the floral nuance that comes from being in that blend. If you guys have any questions, please ask. I'm riding solo tonight. The wife is uh, distracting the children, um, so so I can do the tasting tonight. So if you have any questions, I got the laptop right here. Just, uh, let me know. Um, again, uh, we are reopening uh, starting this Saturday uh, by reservation only. Uh, just give call the winery to uh, book your reservation. Um, uh, due to the guidelines, we are not allowed to do tastings right now, but we will be serving wine by the glass and bottle um, to enjoy on property. And we also have, you have to purchase uh, food and that is being provided by Bel Forno, which is a local Italian pizzeria in um, Old Orchid, where I, right here where I live in town. Uh, fantastic food if you're a local and you've had it. Um, you know, it's, it's great stuff. Uh, brick, they'll be doing brick oven pizzas at the winery um, that are going to be designated to, to pair with the wine. It's going to be really nice. Um, so give us a call if you want to set up a reservation. And not just this Saturday, but if you want to come out you know, next Saturday or you know, following, um, you can book out. Um, there's only a limited amount of spots available. Uh, question. Can you tell us a little history about the tasting room? We saw it on your tour on Saturday and I hear, heard it's really old. Um, yeah, so our, our tasting room, that building, I believe, was built in 88, so it's actually as old as I am, so I don't, I hope it's not too old. Um, yeah, it's, uh, that, that building's actually not that old. It's the front barn that we are in, um, the second barrel room with the concrete tanks. That's one of the original buildings, the, the barn that's on the logo, um, and that was one of the original buildings, I believe, I was built in 78, um, but uh, before the tasting room, they would just, you know, do tastings out of the barrel room. Jeff, how is Lauren? Lauren is doing great. Um, she, like I said, she's out with the kids right now helping me out. Um, but she's doing good. Um, you know, she's, she's been working this whole time as I've been working from home. But, you know, not much has changed for her on her work schedule. She's actually, I think, been working more um, because she works in healthcare. So, um, but uh, we're good, you know, we're happy, we're, you know, grateful. I'm happy to get back to, you know, back at the winery a little bit more. Um, Jeff, by the way, Saturday's tour was great, thank you. I thought it was a fun tour. Um, wine Whisk, do you ever aerate your Vignette? Being so floral on the nose, it might be interesting. So aerate as far as like just aerating in my glass. I absolutely, you know, like to open it up and, you know, get those, some of those floral, floral notes uh, off. Um, but like I said, you know, I was talking about earlier, you know, RVA isn't, isn't too over the top floral. It's not a super, you know, um, what I would say, you know, a classic floral v um, you know, you know, and to be complete, 100% honest, you know, when I started at Zaka Mesa, you know, before I had our Viognier, I didn't like Viognier really as a varietal. I thought, you know, the couple that I have had previous to that, you know, the, from Condru or, you know, a couple other producers, um, you know, I, it wasn't something that I really enjoyed. And when I had our Viognier, I thought that it was a great balance between, you know, not being over the top floral, but more on these tropical and stone fruit characteristics, which I really liked. So I kind of, this Viognier I really enjoy, but just Viognier as a varietal, you know, I'm not, so, I'm not super crazy about. The other nice thing about this wine is its price point, um, you know, $20, $25 um, for a really solid bottle of a state grown, um, hand-picked grapes. Um, it's, a, it's a great price point. And this wine still is current, uh, part of a, a special we have going on six or more. 15% uh, off for non-club members and 30% off for club. Um, and again, you know, if you order six or more bottles, we're just still doing $5 shipping and you get a, a cool pack, which keeps the wine cool for your hot areas. Obviously, if you're not shipping somewhere, it's not hot. It's not important, but a lot of places are right now. So if uh, anything over, you know, 80, 80 degrees or warmer, you need a cool pack in your wine or you're risking, you know, losing all that wine you're shipping out. So it's important. 
Wine was asked, is it 100% Viognier? Absolutely, 100% Viognier in this bottle. Um, again, you know, from three different blocks with Cushman E, which is the old, older block on our estate, which was planted in 92, um, and then Fox and A and Fox and B, which were planted in the 2000s. Uh, Cushman E brings a lot more of the uh, floral and mineral characteristics, um, where um, Fox and A and Fox and B bring more of that tropical, um, you know, tropical uh, uh, nuance and stone fruit nuance. Um, and again, Cushman E has been isolated in the 2019 vintage. We took a little bit from that block to do a small bottling, which will be a uh, which will be called the Cushman uh, Cushman Block Viognier. So that one's going to be more mineral driven, a little more floral because it's all from that one block. So a little more classic Viognier, I think, um, which will be uh, really interesting to see how it comes out. Ninety degrees here in the Bay Area. Yeah, see, it's it's warm just about everywhere in California right now. I'm not sure about everywhere else, but I, you know, Denver's eighty-five. It's pretty warm. Florida's getting hot. The Panhandle area. Hey, Brenda. <laughs> Brenda is my mother-in-law. Saying hello. Cheers, Brenda. I know Brenda likes the Viognier. I often bring that over to. Uh, to their house to have. She seems to really enjoy it. <laughs> um, so yeah, again guys, um, if you would like to make a reservation, just give us a call at the winery. Um, that calls forwarded to me and I'll get you set up with a reservation uh, for this Saturday or reopening. Um, we'll see how things go as things ease up. You know, we'll, we'll change it from just Saturday to some more days, but for now it'll just be uh, Saturdays right now. Um, again, um, oh, as far as the live tastings go, we'll still be doing the live tastings. I just won't be doing uh, the tastings on Saturday. I already actually had this Saturday blocked off because um, we'll be reopening. And also, it's my birthday, so I want to take a day off. <laughs> um, but uh, no, no uh, live tasting this Saturday. We're going to continue with the Wednesday night tastings. And uh, I'll have to see about rescheduling the Saturdays for either later on Saturday, because um, I'll be at the winery most of the day. So maybe you know change it to six six thirty seven o'clock, or just change the day um, uh, to a different day for the Saturday tastings. But I'm going to keep doing the live tastings. You can still schedule a private virtual tasting uh, with with me with any three bottle order. Um, got another question. How does the growing temperature at Zaca Mesa compare to say Biendecito and Irba Young and how does how how does that impact the wine? Yeah, uh Biendecito is definitely a much cooler uh climate, you know, more more a little more coastal influence. Um so with the the cooler climate you're gonna get even more of you know more mineral driven, higher acidity, uh probably uh and also you know more I think floral characteristics are going to come out where when you get to a little more or considered moderate to warm, um, you're going to get more of those tropical and stone fruit characteristics. So um, if anything, I think uh, I've never had Biennecito Vignet. Um, be interested to try that. Oh, thank you, Jeff. I hit those laugh faces by mistake. <laughs> well, I thought you were just laughing because I said something funny, Brenda. Um, anyways, guys, um, I hope everyone's having a great day, um, and I hope to see you at the, the winery soon. Um, like I said, this Saturday, we're reopening by reservation. Come see us, and every Saturday going forward for now, and that could expand. Uh, got another question. Are you seeing quite a bit more of this varietal in your general region of California? Yeah, you know, I think uh, Vignet has definitely grown in uh, popularity and it continues to um, as an accepted varietal. Um, I work in wholesale as well and I've seen it be, you know, more successful successful as a wine by the glass. Um, uh, seafood restaurants seem to really like it. Um, I think it goes really nice with uh, seafood. Um, it's, a, it's also a really nice uh, Japanese restaurant, Japanese cuisine. Um, wine too, and we actually had it placed in a couple sushi restaurants, which worked out really nicely. Um, but it's a nice alternative, you know, to your typical, you know, Chardonnay, Sauvignon Blanc, um, 
you know, kind of um, offerings recently. So it's nice to have something that's a little, you know, more unique and different. Um, you know, I'd love to see it grow more. I think, you know, with our style Viognier, it has been a little more successful and the plantings in our area still isn't, uh, there's not a huge amount, you know, we have one of the larger Viognier uh, vineyards in, in the county. Um, so I'd love to see it grow more. Um, you know, it just takes more people like you out there buying it and drinking it and talking about it. Oh, also our Viognier is used in the SOM test. So um, it is considered a classic uh, California Viognier is used in the SOM exam, which is really cool. Um, Bob, Bob Lindquist made a coupe Viognier from Bienacito. It was a crisp wine. Yeah. Um, yeah, Bob Lindquist, actually a previous winemaker at Zaca Mesa. Um, great, great winemaker. Coupe is another one of my favorite labels, actually. Um, I did not know that he had a Bienacito Viognier. I'm going to have to find that, um, search for it and grab a bottle because um, I would love to try that. That sounds great. Um, I see more Napa wineries are sourcing from Santa, uh, Santa Rita, is that either Santa Maria Hills or Santa Maria Valley or Santa Rita Hills, one or, one or the other. Is that competing with Central Coast Access? You know, anytime Napa is sourcing from us, I think that's a great sign. You know, it shows our um, area's versatility and varietals and the, you know, the want of what we grow here in their own bottlings uh, from different from, you know, obviously than what grows in Napa and this in the style of wines that are in Napa. So it's great to see. I, I, we actually sell some Syrah to some Napa producers. Uh oh, got a, got a little freeze here. What's going on here? Okay. Sorry about that, guys. I got a, somebody called me in the middle of this, and it it messed things up. We're okay, can you guys see me? Well, I hope you guys can see me. Um, okay, cool, thank you. Yeah, that um, it froze on my screen here, so I wasn't sure if you guys were hearing me or not. Sorry about that. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, Santa Barbara County, you know, it's a great diverse region. So anytime, you know, we're getting places up in Napa or any any other area that's sourcing from us and hopefully, you know, that, that vineyard's being designated on the bottle, um, that's always always a plus. Um, you know, Santa Barbara County, I think, is, you know, one of the fastest growing regions um, in California and the United States for some of the, you know, high profile, high demand wines. And I hope that hope that continues. It's still an area where I think you can get such great value in wines. Um, you know, we still haven't, you know, aren't hitting the, you know, average, you know, 50, 60, 70, $80 a bottle. Um, and you can get some really, really great, um, wines in the County, uh, that are just such a great value and price point. All right, well, if you guys have any questions, um, I, I really hope everyone's doing good, and I hope to see you guys out at the winery soon. Um, everybody, you know, be nice to each other, take care of one another, and um, I hope to see everyone soon at the winery. Uh, we will adjust our live tasting schedule on our website um, as we figure out what we're going to do for Saturdays, but w Wednesdays are definitely going to continue as planned on schedule um, with the wines that we have and, um, you got it, Terry. Um, and you know, I will, uh, hopefully see you guys at the winery and we'll reschedule the Saturday tastings to a different time or day. Uh, and we'll let you guys know as soon as we, we do that. Um, give it, give us a call at the winery. If you want to make a reservation to come out and see us on Saturdays, um, 
And uh, again, we're still doing our shipping deals for all the people that you know can't make it out there and want some Zaca Mesa wine. So um, you know, just give us a call and we'll get an order in for you. Also, you can go on our website, ZacaMesa.com. Um, this video will be posted later on our Instagram. Um, there will be a link for YouTube. You can watch it there. You can also watch it on um, IGTV uh, through Instagram. So um, with that, thanks everyone again. Cheers. And uh, stay cool, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.